Pipeline the Surf Coaster is a really unique roller coaster located at SeaWorld Orlando. And you guessed it, Orlando. I actually really enjoyed this coaster. I think everyone should take a ride on this coaster if you get the chance. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on this super cool coaster in five minutes. <laughs> Pipeline the Surf Coaster is probably one of the most unique coasters out there. It is basically taking a stand-up coaster and just making it like 10 times more comfortable. Which is the W in my book. And let me tell you, this coaster is surprisingly good. And there is something I did notice. The shorter you are, the more the trains can move upwards. And it just makes the experience just that much better. Now before you say, what the heck am I talking about? Hold on, give me a second. So I'm currently 5'7", and I got some very good airtime on this coaster. The tallest you can be to ride this coaster is 78 inches or 6'6", six six. so I'm about a foot under the height limit. So in theory, my seat can lift up about a foot, which is actually kind of crazy. But if you are on the taller end, like 6 foot per se, your seat will only be able to lift up about 6 inches, which explains the 78 inch maximum height. So if you are taller, you unfortunately aren't going to be getting the same amount of airtime as someone who is a little shorter. It was just something I noticed, I kind of wanted to point it out to you guys, because I thought it was a little interesting. Because this is one of the very few coasters out there that height actually affects the ride experience. So now that I pointed it out to you guys, let's go through the layout of Pipeline, the Surf Coaster. Man, I love that name. Element by Element. You start out by rolling out of the station, while a slightly annoying voice tells you about something, or uh, whatever. You then launch and hit your top speed of 60 miles per hour. You then go over a little bunny hill in the middle of the launch, similar to say Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. And let me tell you, this bunny hill is way better than that of Copperhead Strike. In the front, you get a good pop of ejector air, and the one in your face, oh, it's just a great experience. Now, in the back, you get yanked over the bunny hill, and you get some sustained ejector air time there. Now, this launch isn't super forceful, but the bunny hill really makes up for it. You then head up into an overbank turn that stands at a height of 110 feet. You get some good air time as your seat lifts up, and it's a pretty good first element. You then transition to a sort of twisted air time hill. And let me tell you, this is the best element of the ride. This thing delivers some amazing air time. It feels so cool, and it kind of feels like you're flying. It is definitely the standout element, in my opinion, and I must say, it looks good too. You then head into, hold on, what do they call this thing again? A wave curl. Well, that fits the theme nicely. This is a pretty good inversion. It doesn't really give hang time or anything, but it is kind of a weird sensation when you're hanging and your seat is kind of moving down towards the ground, and I kind of like it. Next up, you head into a trim airtime hill. Like, why does every B&M have to have trim brakes? Like, come on. At least the trim isn't really noticeable in the front, but it really hits in the back, so that airtime is kind of ruined. You then glide through a helix and head into another bank turn, which I don't really know how, but it manages to give you a little pop of air, so hey, I'll take it. You then head into another twisted airtime hill, and this element is also very good. It's almost identical to the first twisted airtime hill, just smaller and take it at a slower speed, but nonetheless, it's still good. After two bank turns, you do a low to the ground twist, providing one last good pop of airtime before you got into the brakes. When you reach the station, you are once again greeted with a slightly annoying voice and you have just concluded your ride on Pipeline. Overall, this is a really unique and enjoyable coaster. It's pretty smooth, but it can be slightly rattly in the back, but it's nothing too bad. I do recommend riding it early in the day, because the capacity isn't spectacular, and it has absolutely no line in the mornings. When I visited SeaWorld Orlando, I was able to ride Pipeline three or four times in the morning, because it had absolutely no line. I would also recommend riding in the front, because the front row, it's definitely worth the wait. And don't get me wrong, the back is still good, but the front is just, I just enjoyed the experience a little bit better. And I feel like some moments even had some stronger airtime in the front. So, should you take time out of your day to go ride Pipeline the Surf Coaster when you visit SeaWorld Orlando? Absolutely. It's a super unique coaster, and I really like the experience, and I think you will too. If you want to find out why the b and Surf Coaster is about to become really popular, then click the video on your screen right now. This video will tell you exactly why the B&M Surf Coaster may be popping up at your home park. 
So, without further ado, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.